More and more these days, many of us are asked to analyse and report on large data sets. We're being asked to present that data in meaningful and interesting ways, as a report or a dashboard, for example. And for many people, Excel is the tool that they use to create these reports. However, before the reports can be created, the data needs to be imported into Excel. And that's where Power Query comes in. Power Query is a free add-in for Excel. It's written by Microsoft and is now the recommended tool to use for importing data. One of the main benefits of Power Query is that it can be used to import data from a wide range of sources. For example, a database such as Access or SQL Server, a cloud-based service such as Microsoft Azure, a website, a SharePoint list, an online service such as Facebook or Salesforce. Because an Excel workbook contains just over a million rows, if you try and import more than this into Excel, it'll either fail completely or only import the first 1,048,576 records from the dataset. In fact, even if your dataset contains significantly less than a million rows, Having an Excel file containing, say, 100,000 rows of data could affect performance and cause Excel to stop responding. So instead of importing the data into Excel, using Power Query, you can connect directly to the data source. You can see that there's no raw data stored in this Excel file. The data source for the pivot tables is the database itself. There's actually more to Power Query than importing, though. Very often, when working with imported data, you need to do quite a lot of cleaning and transforming of the data to make it usable. On the left, we have the raw data imported from, say, a database. On the right, we have the seven steps that we have to go through every time the data is imported, which for us is once a week. Without Power Query, this would be, have to be done manually, or you'd need to create a macro to automate the process. And if the process changes in the future, the macro would need to be edited. So you'd need to learn how to read and edit VBA or pay someone else to do it for you. Using Power Query, you can create a query, which is simply a list of actions stored under a name. The query is created using the friendly Power Query editor and doesn't require any coding knowledge. When it comes to next week, you import the new data into the workbook or update the connection and then refresh the query by clicking a button and behind the scenes, the seven steps are automatically executed on the new raw data. Another feature of Power Query is unpivoting data. Here we have data that may look like a table, but it's not. As it stands, it's fine, but if the boss says, can you create three or four pivot table reports from the data, you can't. Power Query's unpivot command lets you reverse engineer this data back into a table, and that can then be used to create pivot tables. Imagine that you're the owner of an ice cream business. You have three stores, one in Philadelphia, one in New York, and one in San Francisco. The sales data for each store is stored in separate tables in Excel, but you need to consolidate the three sets of data and produce a pivot table. And this can easily be done with Power Query. Another common scenario is where you have several text files or Excel files containing data that's been exported from somewhere. If you put all these files into a single folder, Power Query can be used to quickly import them into Excel, or you can connect to them. And this will make the creation of your pivot table reports quick and easy. Power Query is available for Excel for Windows 2010 and above. For 2010 and 2013, it's available as an add-in that you need to download and install. For 2016, the Power Query add-in has been replaced by functionality that's built right into Excel. It's the same functionality with improvements and is found on the data tab on the ribbon in the get and transform section. So that's Power Query, but what about Power Pivot? 
One of the main uses of Power Pivot is to act as a data source for pivot tables where the data comes from more than one table or more than one source. Here we have a pivot table that's been created from data in two separate tables in an Excel workbook. The two tables are linked together or related via a common field, a column in each table that contains the same data. In this case, the common fields are the two office fields. Just because the tables contain columns with the same heading or the same data in them, Excel doesn't automatically create a relationship or link between the tables. To create a relationship, the two tables have to be added to the workbook's data model. A data model can be described as two or more lists or data sets that are linked together via a common field or column. If you're familiar with a database like Microsoft Access or SQL Server, you'll be familiar with the concept of related tables. So you could say that in Access, you have a data model that's made up of the tables and the links between them. A data model is more of a concept than something physical. So here we have two handwritten lists, but because they're linked, we could say that what we have is a data model. In Excel, each workbook has a data model and initially it's empty. Power Pivot is used to add the tables to the data model and then create the relationship or link between them. Another reason for using Power Pivot is to create relationships between data from different sources. Let's say I need to create a pivot table where some of the data comes from my sales database and some related data comes from a text file. Using Power Query, I can import the data or link to the data source, as I explained earlier. However, I'd need to ensure that I tick a box in Power Query that says Add to Data Model. Once the data has been imported into the data model, I can use Power Pivot to create the relationships. Power Pivot has its own language called DAX, which is used to create formulas. Here we have the revenue and the cost for each flavour of ice cream and each location. But we also need to show the profit for each flavour and location. The profit isn't part of the source data. So using DAX, I've added a new column within the table in the data model and added the column to the pivot table value section. Power Pivot is available for Excel for Windows 2010 and above. Unlike Power Query, in all versions of Excel, Power Pivot is an add-in, but the add-in is bundled with Excel, so it doesn't have to be downloaded separately. However, it does have to be enabled in order to use it, and that's done via the File Options menu in Excel. So, to summarise, Power Query is used to get data into Excel or to link to a data source. Power Pivot can also be used to import data into Excel, but there are fewer data sources available, and in my testing, importing via Power Query produce slightly smaller file sizes. So Power Query or Get and Transform if you have Excel 2016 is the recommended way. Power Pivot is used to create relationships between tables and data sets, manage the data model and create custom calculated fields.